Good evening everyone. Thanks a lot for staying with CNN News 18. I'm Shivani Gupta. The war between the Indian government and especially Twitter as a social media giant over new IT rules compliance is escalating. Many of the other social media intermediaries, Google, Facebook and others, even personal messaging services have complied with the new IT rules. But sources indicate that Twitter has not. They have not shared the detail with the government of India on their compliance officer and have shared the name only of a lawyer as their grievance and nodal officer. That of course will not fly as far as the government is concerned and we've already seen the stiff view, the stern view that the government has taken on Twitter also resisting the compliance to these new IT rules in the name of freedom of speech. So the big question we're asking today is whether Twitter is itching for a fight or will it have to eventually succumb to the compliance of the new IT rules or will this continue to be a more escalated continuous fight between the government and the social media giant. Let me go across to the guests who are joining us today. Co-founder, co-founder Apramaya Radhakrishna is joining us on the show. Ishkaran Bhandari, noted advocate. Abhijit Ayan Mitra, author and social commentator. Mishi Chaudhary, legal director, Software Freedom Law Center, with a practice both in New York and New Delhi. All joining us on the show. Thanks a lot uh, to the ladies and gentlemen for joining us. Apramaya, I want to come to you first up. Ku is one of those social media platforms that is being looked as an alternative to Twitter and an Indian alternative, but is also one of those social media platforms that has complied to the new IT rules. So I want to begin by asking you if you could give us a brief of what all you have shared with the government of India and did you find any problems? Did you find any issues while doing so? Were there any concerns? Yeah, I think the guidelines are pretty straightforward, uh, very user centric. And, uh, you know, we, we didn't find too much of a problem adhering to it. Uh, there, are, there are things that you had to do right away and there are things that you will keep doing uh, month on month, right? So there are, there are two sets of those. Uh, one of the most important points was to, uh, you know, actually appoint officers, uh, whether it was the chief grievance officer for users to complain to, uh, nodal officer for government bodies to get in touch with the company for mm -hmm. uh, and also a chief compliance officer who will make sure that overall all the rules are being followed right uh, so i think this was this was the most you know uh, action oriented thing that that was required in terms of putting manpower in place and you know all the rest we were you know pretty much doing right uh, uh, you know getting back to a user who is complaining on the platform within a certain number of hours we try to do it within 24 mm -hmm. to 36 hours. The rules ask us to do it within 72 hours. Um, you know, taking down you know extremely bad content, uh, which is uh, which is in the domain of pornography, child pornography, uh, harassment. You know, things like that, which are black and white, uh, are very very uh, you know uh, necessary for this uh, social for social networks. And I think overall the mm -hmm. guidelines makes social media a safer place for users. Uh, right. So I think, uh, you know, we've, we've not found it too difficult. Uh, there are a few things on, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, getting yourself verified uh, as a person because there are a lot of masked people on the internet. Uh, so unmasked people who show their real mm -hmm. face, uh, their voice should get a lot more uh, weightage on the internet than the guys who uh, wear masks and say anything they want. Right. So I think you know, the, the lines between online and offline have to blur. Uh, what you are uncomfortable saying in front of a whole gathering uh, in the offline world when you're in a hall uh, and what you are uncomfortable saying online uh, should, should all merge because uh, we're governed by the same laws. Okay. Uh, you touched upon a very interesting point. I'll come to that in a little bit. But focusing more on Twitter's defiance, I want to go across to Mishi. Mishi, why is it that Twitter is making a grievance redressal system, which sounds fair uh, and is required by the laws, into a freedom of speech fight? Uh, Co-founder here says there is no issue as far as apply, uh, you know, appointing these three officers are concerned. But Twitter has not even complied to this much. Well, I can't speak for Twitter. <laughs> Um, I don't represent them and yeah. um, I am not their lawyer. I can only. But what do you think is the concern here? 
So um, what I can speak about is um, the IT rules, and I can also speak about um, uh, what I think have been observing as a person who works on users' rights. Um, I will say that um, um, this seems to be a theater which has been conducted now in public through unprecedented forms of communications, like letters from the ministry, um, like um, arm twisting tactics, which the government seems to have acquired, um, and a response by Twitter, which is an unfortunate thing that um, government of India is mandated by the constitution to guarantee rights of free speech and expression, as well as right to privacy to its citizens. It's not about a private party, Twitter is a private business, but it seems that they are the ones who are now telling what the constitution itself says. Um, I do not know whether this is gearing up for a fight. I don't um, believe in all those terms because businesses are much more sophisticated. They um, do not want that kind of publicity or um, a lot of this is about the top line as well as the bottom line revenues. So I don't think that uh, a public fight, um, unless really necessary, is something which any business goes for. Let's just examine the rules here where the problems are. The problems are rightly so. There's been um, a mandate by the rules where the three grievance redressal officers, which seems like a very simple thing, but um, that you just need three people and they need to be appointed. But if you see what has uh, uh, happened just right before that or how um, uh, government has been asking for taking down of handles or blocking access to information or after mm -hmm. the entire theater about this toolkit with Mr. Patra who's a BJP spokesperson thing and a police team lands up mm -hmm. in the evening um, at the office of a business and the rules require that these three compliance officers, the chief compliance officer, the grievance officer, as well as the nodal officers, are supposed to be employees and resident and can be personally criminally liable. I can't speak for other businesses, but obviously the okay. fear here is that if you, if I, Mishi Chaudhary, say something about you or any of the panelists on Twitter, something which is defamatory, now that that defamatory ca uh, content okay. should be punished. Mishi can be taken to court in a civil action. Mishi can also be in at least under Indian law, criminal action can be started for, uh, for defamation. But if the platform I choose to say or use that, uh, use to say that content, which is Twitter, mm -hmm. if they are being held liable and somebody who's appointed by them, that throat is being choked and they get also criminally liable. Okay. It becomes ab absolutely difficult for any business to be appointing anybody who will be personally li liable for user generated content. You've never seen that. Okay. If it were only I get your central orders, point. I'll come back to you. Let me take that to Abhijit Ayer also. Abhijit, uh, you've written a blog piece on news18.com and I encourage our viewers to go and read it. You say that this is tech feudalism, what Twitter is trying to do. Why do you say that? And why do you also say that this is a return to the dark ages? What is the big problem with what Twitter is doing? No, the point here is, as the speaker before me very clearly uh, pointed out, is that uh, Twitter is in violation of the Intermediary Act. They are moderating content and they don't want to be punished for moderating content. They are uh, suborning criminality. Uh, in this case, apparently a manipulated document, which they are refusing to share information on criminality with the government, which is incidentally a FIR filed by the Congress party, not by the BJP. Now, why is this tech feudalism? Remember, the point of feudalism is that you have these supra authorities over elected or due law representatives uh, you know, who think they are judge, jury, and executioner all rolled into one. And they want to avoid any criminal liability for breaking the law in a country. They don't want to appoint these nodal officers because they know very well that they are suborning the commission of a crime. They have information on it. They don't want to uh, give that information. And they're powerful enough to get away with it. 
and that is the very definition of feudalism where you're seeing state power being you know taken over by these unelected entities what does it tell you about a company that doesn't have a single empowered employee mm -hmm. sitting in delhi that is claiming to uh, you know protect uh, uh, you know indian freedom of speech let's be clear there is no freedom of speech issue involved out here it is one clearly of criminality of an, and of an allegedly forged document where these people have uh, you know prejudged a subjudicial situation much like a feudal lord would saying that this is a manipulated mm -hmm. document when it is in fact under investigation and when they are asked to provide proof of it they refuse right. to do so instead mm. now mind you any time you have missed your taxes or anything like that i don't know what is unprecedented about the government sending a letter because if you have missed your taxes if you are in view of anything if the government needs to communicate with you i believe in this country they actually do send you letters yeah that no all right so the central yeah. issue is that as an intermediary you're actually using your editorial powers to decide what is right what is not what is legal not legal what can be on the platform what cannot be on the platform and what is manipulated and what is not manipulated but you don't want any responsibility over that adjudication or that judgment ishkaran bandari legally speaking <laughs> does twitter have any grounds let us first understand two fundamental issues and starting from us uh, consumer decency act section 230 the entire protection to social media was if they were platforms nobody envisaged a day when they mm. would become editors what has happened now leave alone this uh, recent controversy of manipulated media or fact checks what has happened and documented and you have had senate hearings on that in us you have had house of representative hearings there on twitter as well as on facebook which incidentally he refused to come for in india and i am sorry to say indian parliament did not take action which they should have taken but anyways coming back to the main issue the purpose was that anybody can hmm. publish anything here and because you have no editorial control you were given protection under section 230 or section 79 under it act and in all democracies that is there but the problems started happening when you started verifying accounts based on your own whims and fancies there is not one objective criteria on which you hmm. will verify an account when you started suspending accounts and i'm giving you one example hindus and jashri ram what sharjil usmani said he wasn't suspended he probably had a blue tick then i don't know whether he has a blue tick now maybe he has so and on other things you started suspending accounts the minute you decided that this is worthy of suspension this is not worthy of suspension without a lawful order of a court or any authority you are editor that's the very basic simple you can say you're an unbiased editor you can say you're a biased editor that is a matter of debate but you are doing editorial function if you do editorial function can you hmm. operate as a platform that's a fundamental question whichever side of the debate you are on second question we have to understand you are operating right. in india an indian has a grievance with you and you refuse to appoint a indian grievance officer how can that fly and bigger companies have done and secondly thirdly i would like to say when they say no business would get into it that is true if you are actually a proper operating business what is the indian revenue of twitter i was just reading uh, on a economic uh, survey uh, an economic uh, newspaper merely 50 crores was revenue and 5 crores was profit so they are a tool at least in india where their ideology is more important than business that is why when people who are doing proper billions of dollars of business have complied facebook has complied google has complied mm -hmm. because those are businesses if you are an ideological platform that is a third and last one point i would like to say when we talk of freedom of speech let us not forget the law of the land a you have 192 reasonable restrictions but even more importantly freedom of speech is only available to indian citizens not to foreign owned entities or corporations that is the basis of article 19 you cannot okay. be a foreign owned company and claim freedom of no. speech so the government has also said protect. and last point yeah. last one last point i will like just one last the government has also it. said that we are not uh, trying to restrict freedom of speech here yes, through this yes. we just want that if somebody is unhappy with the action the editorial action yes. that these platforms begin mm. to take 
there has to be naturally a grievance redressal system. Yes. So, Bishi, okay. I want to come back to you. Yeah. Two of the speakers have, you know, raised objections to what you've said. How is it that yes. everybody else has complied, but Twitter hasn't? Is Twitter some great visionary of freedom of speech that others aren't? So, um, let me just um, clarify here the inaccuracy of uh, the law, which has now been already stated. I'm going to state again, I don't speak for Twitter. I do not know why I'm the designated Twitter defender here, which I'm not. What I'm going to tell is the uh, complete inaccuracy of the law, which has been now uh, laid out here. Now, intermediaries are supposed to be not exercising editorial content. That is absolutely true. However, we have also seen all this, which has been said, oh, US is holding hearings. Uh, Please read Communications Decency Act, Section 230, which means that no platform is responsible for any user-generated content. That's exactly the thing which Section 79 also of the That's what I said. That was the point. Can I complete, please? Can I complete? So um, now the rules which we are talking about, if you see the rules um, and you see the categories under Rule 3B, there are 10 categories. Now the government, what government wants, and when government came up with these rules, the intent was that there is a lot of misinformation on all these platforms, which is true. There is a misinformation in the, on these platforms. Mm -hmm. And the government said, there is a lot of objectionable material which we would like to be taken down. And that is why we are coming up with these rules. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the rules now force all the intermediaries, and there are 10 categories which are provided, um, which is uh, things which belong to another person, which is harmful to children. Now, there are certain categories which we can all agree about. If there's child sexual abuse material, nobody is going to have a debate about it that it should not be removed. Now, the category 3B10 says that Twitter or any other platform, any intermediary is required to tell its users as well as remove such information, which is patently false and untrue and is written or published in any form. Now, mm -hmm. through these rules, you are saying to a company, if you don't remove all of these rules, if you don't label things, whether it is labeling or whatever mechanism a private business comes up and puts it, then you will lose your protection mm -hmm. in law which give you, and anything Mishi says, you will also become responsible. So you make a law, you tell them, that you if must you don't do take it down, about it. if the government and asks you to take it down under relevant no, IPC no. sections and you refuse no, no, that's to do not it, that's it. only when you that will allow it. That is how it used to be. Without these rules, under the Shreya Singhal judgment, it was very clear if there is a court order or if there is a government recent order, then these companies must take down everything. With these new rules, these categories have been created under which it no longer says that it is only going to be a court order, it is only going to be a government thing. That's my first point. Second point I'm going to make is, this is a private business. So is who? So is everybody else. Every intermediary is a private business. Private businesses can get, get into contractual mm -hmm. terms and conditions with the users as long as the terms of the contracts are not illegal or unlawful. Now, for a government, a police investigative authority does issue certain summons under section 91 of CRPC, the criminal procedure code, when FIR is, signed, FIR is filed. And then they say, you file this FIR, we are sending you a section 91 notice under CRPC, you might have some information or documents which will help us do an investigation, please provide us those investigations. That's totally different from showing up at somebody's offices and then issuing a notice. You don't require all of that. We are all lawyers here. We are all, we've okay. seen this happen okay. over years. Then second, the third thing here is now. Okay, I'll, I have to interrupt you here. I have to interrupt you here. I have to quick, take quick responses, please, Mishi. Ishkaran wanted to come in here. Mm -hmm. So Ishkaran, uh, mm -hmm. th the problem is that this no longer is with court orders. That's what Mishi is saying, that the government just says that you take something down. Is that going to be problematic in future? Because who are who is to say that the government will always make a sound decision in fairness to everybody? See, please understand, I am rather surprised at this reading of the law because the situation as it exists was what? When Twitter, let's take the recent controversy, decides on its own that X tweet is manipulated or not manipulated, 
in an ongoing criminal investigation, the SHO is empowered to seek information as to how you came to that conclusion. And if you do not respond to his summons or notice, because the MD suddenly said that I am only a sales head, even though there are on record statements which said that he was the MD, then they obviously will reach your place to serve the notice. That's the basic of criminal law that they come to your place okay. to serve notice if you do not appear on their notice. That is what happened in this case. And secondly, let's understand the very basic. Any document which is a part of ongoing investigation has to be proved. You see CFS report, you see court okay, orders. Okay, I'm not discussing the document alone. I'm on the larger exactly. issue that Twitter is making about freedom of yeah. speech in India. Yes. Let me so, go across the, to Ku, uh, let me go across to Apramaya once again. Is this about freedom of speech then? Or is it more about a private entity's rights? So I think, uh, you know, at, at the end of it, uh, freedom of speech is important for every country. Uh, different countries. So when Ku goes out and, uh, you know, will operate in other countries, uh, we will not go and say, okay, I know what freedom of speech is. Uh, so I will not obey your laws. Let's say I go to UAE, it is different. If I go to Indonesia, and if I go to America, it will be different. India will be. So I think aligning uh, to the local laws is extremely important as a business. Otherwise, you know, I'm not elected in US. I'm not elected in UAE. I'm not, as in there's no election there. So, so you have to respect the law of the land no matter where you go and operate. And first you comply, then hmm. I would go and say, okay, I have, you know, these two points that are, uh, that I have a problem with, let's solve it together. Right, so that is one way of going about things. The other way is to make a you know a public statement that I am the guy who knows freedom of speech according to where I am registered, which is for for who it will be India. If I go and mm -hmm. say I will apply the laws of freedom of speech that are applicable in India to the rest of the world, I won't. I will be asked questions by the rest of the world, right? And that's exactly what I think okay. uh, India is also doing. Point again, and I'll go to Abhijit with this. The point, the elephant in the room, Abhijit, is not just the editorial, uh, you know, inclination and the political leanings as alleged. And, you know, as some CEO has already said, there is a left leaning that Twitter has. The elephant in the room also is the fact that there are different standards, in, uh, you know, uh, shown by Twitter in different issues. For example, if there's a Capitol Hill riots, you know, all those who uh, aligned with the riot, they were taken down. But in India, those who were spreading rumors on the January 26th violence, you know, there was resistance from Twitter. Uh, then there is obviously the issue of taking off, you know, handles off. Anybody with an inflammatory speech is quickly taken off or sent a notice or suspended or restricted. But you've had international personalities literally talking about a bloodbath and a genocide, but they didn't really get the same impact. So that is also a problem, not just the disparity in what it does in US and India or any other country in India, but also its, you know, uh, editorial slant towards a certain side. That makes it a bigger issue in what Twitter is doing. Look, look, the editorial slant and their inconsistency even in applying their own policies, for example, is a completely different discussion. That has to, and unfortunately under American law and under Indian law, there is no requirement for them to be consistent per se. The issue here is one of suborning criminality or protecting criminality and refuse to cooperate with a criminal investigation. Now, anywhere you go, in any part of the land, I don't see what is controversial about forgery. Forgery is the same in America. Forgery is the same in India. Forgery is the same in Russia. It's the same in Timbuktu. And I suppose if Antarctica ever gets a government, it will be the same in Antarctica. Now, there has been a criminal action called forgery, which is completely non-controversial in its uh, criminality. And they are refusing to share information on an under ongoing police investigation, they are basically what they're seeking is extraterritoriality, which is what all racist countries do when they set up okay. military bases or things like that in other countries where they want to operate in that country, but be completely shielded from the laws of that country. Right. So this is this is not an issue of freedom of expression at all. The issue here is one of criminality right. and the culpability of the intermediary that is violating the intermediary laws and taking editorial control of said criminality 
and their refusal to cooperate with the due due right. constituted authorities Absolutely. So ultimately, it's about following Indian law in India. Really, the debate rests at that, and you can look at it from this point or that point. You, if you want to operate in India, the government is insisting you have to operate under our laws. No other ethical debate comes into play here. Thanks a lot to all our uh, panelists for joining us. We'll continue to look at this issue very closely. For now, we also have some breaking news coming in. Some breaking news coming in, PM Cares for Children has been launched. This will empower COVID-affected children for support and empowerment and such children to get a monthly stipend once they turn 18 and a fund of 10 lakh rupees when they turn 23. This is something that has been announced from in affiliation with the PM Cares Fund. So a PM Cares for Children has been launched by the government. Free education will be ensured for children who lost their parents to COVID. Let's also go across to Maria Shakil, who's joining us uh, with more on this. This is something that was emerging as a big issue. Many orphaned due to coronavirus pandemic. PM Cares in launching a new initiative for such children. Yes, that's right. And, uh, you know, the message is very clear that uh, the government stands with uh, children who have lost their parents due to COVID. And such children will get a monthly stipend once they turn 18 and a fund of 10 lakh when they turn 23 from the PM Cares. And, uh, you know, free education uh, will be ensured of for these children. The children will be assisted to get an education loan for higher education as well under PM Cares and the children will get free health insurance of 5 lakh under Aishman Bharat till 18 years as well. So the concern certainly is what we are being told that the Prime Minister has said that children represent the future of the country and we will do everything to support and protect the children is the message coming from the Prime Minister. This is significant because there were multiple reports okay. coming in of children being orphaned because of COVID, uh, losing both their parents to COVID, and now the government says that they will be standing with these children. And this uh, scheme of uh, you know PM cares just for the children of nation has been announced. Right. All right. Thank you so much for bringing us those details. Before I end this edition, also a reminder how wearing a mask not just protects you, but also those around you. So you can join CNN News 18 and Medica Bazaar, a B2B company for medical supplies to hospitals in the biggest mask awareness initiative. Don't show your face in public. Thanks a lot for watching. On the other side, my colleague Maha Siddiqui joins you.